You're looking at live television pictures coming to us from the lunar eclipse that is scheduled to reach the very darkest phase one and one half hours from right now. We have two remote camera crews covering this major astronomical event. They're calling it the best lunar eclipse of at least 100 years. First, let's check in with our reporter, Jim Vargas. Jim is above the Foothill Observatory in the hills above Los Altos. Jim? Well, there it is, getting just a little more spectacular as uh, every moment passes. In about three or four minutes, Jerry, uh, about one half of the moon will be covered. Uh, over at the Foothill Observatory, inside the observatory, there are astronomers, professional and amateur, as well as just those who are curious to see this spectacular sight. And I am told by one professional astronomer, uh, Marvin Van of the observatory, that actually uh, it's more than just a spectacular sight to scientists. Well, it tells about the Earth's atmosphere. The Earth's atmosphere uh, causes the, the sun's image, or the, the sun's rays to spread out, something maybe like two degrees, plus or minus. And it's this dispersion that we're trying to measure. This, in turn, tells us about the condition of the Earth's atmosphere. To be a little more specific, what scientists are doing throughout the United States tonight is measuring the, uh, the shadow or the edge of the eclipse as it passes over some of the, the larger craters on the moon. They know the size of the craters and that will be able to, to that will enable them to make the measurements and they will be able to uh, figure out a lot of things that are going to be used in our space pro program that have been used before and this is the only time when you have an eclipse like this that you can actually make these kinds of measurements. So it is quite important, not just a spectacular sight, and the site is going to get much more spectacular, I am told, as we approach or af after we get the, uh, the total eclipse, we'll, we'll be able to see some colors, such as orange and what I am told will be a uh, bright brick red. So it's going to be quite a sight for those people who are going to stay up uh, pretty late tonight, because this thing is going to go on for another, oh, two hours or so. We're going to have in approximately 35 minutes uh, uh, the total eclipse. That will last for about an hour and uh, then, if, of course, it'll pass on, so people are going to be up till 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning and probably talking about it for some time, because it doesn't happen all the time. Jerry? Okay, Jim, so history is being made as we're watching. Thank you very much. We'll check back with you as the eclipse proceeds throughout the newscast. Jan has more on the eclipse now with the Channel 7's Terry Byrne. Well, as we've heard, Jerry, it's the best look at a total lunar eclipse in more than a century, so a lot of people are out watching. And right now, the crowds are on the slopes of Mount Pam, where amateur astronomers all hope to get a very good look at the eclipse. We've got another live look at that, uh, the moon right now. And Terry Byrne is standing by. Terry? More than a few night owls up here, Jan, and you can see we have an absolutely crystal clear view of the semi-eclipsed moon right now. There are probably well over a hundred people here, three different amateur uh, astronomy groups, and dozens of different telescopes in all different shapes and sizes. With the full eclipse, only about 30 minutes away, you can literally feel the excitement starting to build. All this flurry among moon gazers probably leaves folks with their feet on the ground asking the age-old question, why is this night different than all other nights? Very simply, because tonight's eclipse will last longer than any since 1859. 106 fun-filled minutes of lunar hanky-panky. And if you have practically any imagination at all, this is the perfect night for all kinds of unearthly occurrences. Easy for you to say you've never seen a werewolf. When was the last time you saw the moon turn blood red? It's scheduled to do just that sometime after 11.30. It was, after all, the moon that inspired the cinema's very first science fiction film, and that was back in 1902. What impact does a bad moon rising have on imaginations of the here and now? A person can imagine themselves flying up to the moon, being able to fly around it and things. <laughs> Aided by telescopes, you can almost really do that. Well, you know, it's just sort of turning moon around the edge. It's just sort of interesting. It's not really uh, scary or anything. It's something certainly that people cannot control. One thing that we, are, we have to admit we are small. This must have been a very frightening experience for people who didn't know what was going on. You fear you do know what's going on? <laughs> well, yes, I guess I do. <laughs> I believe all that astronomy. So far, we have not seen any werewolves up here on Mount Tam. We may have heard a few howls in the distance. In fact, everyone here seems to know their stars and sees Sagittarius up there. One of the benefits of this night is because the moon is getting dark, you can see the stars with just unique perspective. 
Jan. Okay, so we'll be checking back with you throughout the newscast as this eclipse continues, and we're going to bring you live looks at the progress of that. Mm -hmm.